I realize my life has become infinitely more interesting the more I say the word yes to experiences or opportunities that might seem inconvenient. Often I think, oh man, that trip sounds so cool. Maybe I can do it next year. But more and more, I just ignore these thoughts and say yes, even when it's not convenient. And it has led me on some amazing adventures. This year, some last minute opportunities arose for me for several hunts, and I just said screw it and pulled the trigger on both of them. I picked up a return mule deer tag in Nevada and a leftover elk tag in Wyoming. And I fully recognize that I'm very lucky to have the flexibility to drop everything and head on these hunts. But who knows when that luck could run out? Whatever combination of luck, privilege, and hard work allowed me to be in the position to say yes to these opportunities, I don't wanna take it for granted. Bone dry. There's got there's water here somewhere. Um, it's not on any map, so which is good probably. But there's cows in here, so we know there's water. But this thing's very dry. For me, I had a big aha moment when I was 15 years old. I would occasionally have this strange pain shoot down my leg, and so my parents took me to the doctor. After several back surgeries, locking up five of my vertebrae with metal plates and screws. Being on bed rest for months and going from around 160 pounds to under 100 pounds, having nerve damage that gave me a drop foot, I'll uh, save you all the gory details. Definitely not a lot of deer sign. A lot of cow, a few elk tracks. In hindsight, I'll always be grateful for those back surgeries because it was my first wake up call that I will never know what tomorrow holds. So we're gonna camp here tonight. I think what we're just gonna do is just kinda see what this road does go down here. And like, I wanna glass this face, but it's so hazy, it's really hard to pick apart. But I'm hoping in the morning, the smoke clears out a little bit and we'll have the morning light. I'll be able to set up and glass that face really good. These are just some big units. I got three units that this tag's good for. We've been in two of them today. Just kind of exploring, finding new, trying to find new spots. So far, our first spot is kind of the most appealing. That being said, we haven't been anywhere prime time again, so see if we see anything tonight or tomorrow morning. Sure, what I went through sucked, but it was nothing compared to what other people go through every day. I've watched others who have had it way worse than me. Seeing how quickly life changes made me want to just make things happen. I mean, every day, everyone gets older. I know I won't be able to carry heavy packs into the mountains forever. So I want to saturate my life with those kind of experiences as much as possible, as soon as possible. I've never seen so many cows at the tops of mountains. What, what, is it, what do you mean? This is like not forage down low. <laughs> There's no grass. Everything's up on top of the slopes. And I like it here. I like being on top of stuff where I can see. I'm kind of ready to stalk a deer. We were able to gain a lot of elevation in the pickup, which put us in a great spot to camp and to get into some ideal glassing positions. I can already see the face that I was wanting to get a look at. See if that spring is wet at all too. There's an in theory a spring in there. I've always wanted to do an early season archery mule deer hunt. I've done it opportunistically in the past, but only in the last couple years have I been able to dedicate a specific time to only archery hunt deer. So I was pretty excited to pick up this turn back permit. The area has been in a bit of a drought, and so I'm not entirely sure how that's affecting the deer patterns. It does seem as though the high country has more grass, but with mule deer being primarily browsers, it seems like the deer were still pretty evenly distributed throughout different elevations. Michael found some deer over here, including the first shooter that we've seen all trip. It's a nice four by four in the bunch. It's not a, not a big deer for Nevada standards probably, but it's a nice buck. It's exciting. There's deer that we could go after. When I envision archery mule deer, my mind always pictures a velvet buck bedded in a high alpine basin. I'm sure we ended up missing out on some deer in the lowland, but it is my hunt, so I chose to focus on higher elevation areas. 
Being on top of mountains just generally makes me happy. Hiking out onto points and being able to look over a ton of country is great. Oh, finding does and elk. No bucks. The hillside I was hopeful for is completely empty. Just taking pictures in my hand, but it's cool. We got some buck. We got planned for tomorrow already. The big question on this is, what do I want out of this hunt? I don't have to fill the tag to be successful, but I also really like filling tags. I'm a huge fan of filling the freezer, but I kind of want to hold out and see what I find. Also, in the back of my head, I know I have a general deer tag in Montana, which I'll be able to fill later. Getting close. Try a glass of knob. I'm a little nervous though, because it's like 600 yards away from where they've been hanging out. So we have to be really sneaky. Multiple elk, along with the bucks we had scouted the night before, were staring right at us. It seemed like all of the animals in that basin converged at one moment and had us pegged right at first light. The deer went up and over, out of sight, and then three of them stayed right above this little cliff band. The trick is now that I was gonna circle around on that back side. We know that there's a good chunk of them that are over that side, so that's a big unknown. So we have to be really careful to try not to spook those. It's exciting though. I'm gonna get it going on a stock. This is the first stock of the hunt. Hopefully, get above them. One will be going uphill. We'll see. All right. Thanks. So I've been sitting here watching for a bit now and two bull elk just came screaming down the hill. I don't see the bucks, they haven't moved. I don't see Marcus. Just spooked what appeared to be a very nice bull elk. Luckily he went the other direction from where the deer are, so. <laughs> There's a lot of animals in here, it makes it hard. Just got my first glimpse of Marcus. He, uh, he's up there, making his way down. And uh, those bucks are still in the same spot, so he's just trying to locate him right now. I see him looking through his binos.
One of the never ending lessons of archery hunting deer is to be patient and observe, waiting for the buck to be in the perfect scenario before moving in on a stock. The problem is, I'm a bad student. Unfortunately, the camera wasn't rolling when the bucks blew out. The biggest buck had smelled me and they bailed over the ridge. <sighs> well, that hurts. Climb a long ways up the mountain. <sighs> Take my time. Got to 70 yards and just couldn't seal it. That one was closer than I thought the big buck was and he smelled me. And then he just kept staring at me, kept staring at me, kept staring at me. And he knew it was up. What happened? Wind. Uh, should've, that was stupid. Should've waited. I knew it was probably gonna swirl, and it did. Should've waited till at least one o'clock. Already whipping. Gonna go sit on our little perch up here. Got coffee making supplies. It's gonna be a good morning. Saw one old maybe deer track, but nothing. Doesn't look like they're using it. I don't know. It's just we haven't seen a lot of deer sign around any water though, which is kind of they got to be getting water somewhere. We got. We only have a half day tomorrow, so we have the morning to try to kill something and that's it. As it turns out, I had one main stock on this hunt and I blew it, but that's okay. We got to see a new landscape, see some incredible country and I don't regret a thing. I found that in eight days, I might only have one good opportunity, and I better make that count. I just really don't want to admit defeat. <laughs> really want to find a buck. <laughs> When the hunt comes to a close and I still haven't filled my tag, I can't pretend it doesn't weigh on me. I'm okay not filling it, but again, it is my goal to kill a buck. Calling it. I don't want to. I really want to keep hunting, but we're on a schedule and we're going to stick to it, kind of. By saying yes to this last minute hunt, I saw a new place and faced new challenges. I learned a lot, and I think ultimately it will lead me to becoming a better hunter. Fast forward about 40 days. I had been on the road and filming nearly nonstop but I still had this leftover elk tag in my pocket and there were four days left in the season. Part of me wanted to head home, but instead I went for it. It doesn't look like the elk are ever in this drainage. There's not really trails on the side hill. There's not good forage. Um, no old sign at all. So we're probably wasting our time in here. 
let's just bail back down and go up the next drainage. So. I knew it would be tough as it's September and this area is primarily winter range and over half of the unit was off limits because non-residents are not allowed to hunt wilderness areas. So I figured it's going to be tough but there has to be a few available elk. I've been able to document and explore so many places. And over the last six years, I've been lucky enough to meet some amazing people through work. I've watched as some of these new colleagues and friends have faced adversity and battled through it, who despite having a crap hand dealt to them, have fought and overcome hardships, doing incredible things along the way. Randy's liver condition continues to be an issue, but he's been able to figure out a way to live with it and go on some crazy adventures. Scott Jones was diagnosed with cancer but maintained a positive attitude and he came out on top. Jim Bachetail and his wife Karen Peterson, they both got cancer and have been able to successfully battle it. Bo Beatty, also cancer and has continually beaten it back. I guess the point I'm trying to make with this is I've watched as they've all had these life-changing illnesses. I've also seen them come out triumphant and it inspires me. It inspires me to live my life to the fullest. Go on adventures and spend time with good people. This is definitely worth it for the views alone. I'm not joking, it's pretty awesome. We're in a pretty, pretty sweet view shed. 360 degrees, potential elk habitat. If we don't see anything tonight, it'll be very telling. I also got to spend time with my cousin Corey, who was along to film the adventure. It was fun to catch up and explore a new area. We covered some serious ground and we just couldn't turn up elk. Looking over this much country and not seeing elk is pretty crazy. It was eye-opening for what we were up against. I don't even remember what elk look like or hear or sound like. I have no idea. After a while, we finally found some elk. And sure enough, there was a small group of elk and a six point bull like down on a pivot. And they ran across the road in front of us and we got some little chunks of public land going up this way. So we'll see if we can get eyes on them and figure out where they're going. Probably won't kill them right now, but we'll at least go try to see what they're doing. Oh, there they are. They were feeding down on private land egg fields at night and crossing through a small piece of public before ending up back on private to bed. We can't go after those elk where they're at now. Our only option is hunting them on that little thin, there's a thin piece of public between the pivot and the place that they're bedding on private. Uh, the good news is that we have one more spot, one more trailhead that we haven't hiked up. And so we waited till it's nice, good, and hot. It's like 10 o'clock in the morning. All the elk should be bedded and not visible. And a really, we should be able to get a real good sweat uh, hiking up this trail. Well, at least there's some aqua. A little developed water tank here. No, no elk sign, but that's cool. I think there's got to be some local elk in here. Well, not a lot, that's for sure, but I don't know. We're just going to work these timber patches, kind of get the wind, throw some cow calls in there, see if anything's around.
Corey found an elk track. This is the freshest only sign that we've found on this entire hunt is this tiny, I'm, I'm going, it's a spike. Spike elk, which is totally legal here. It's going this way. We're gonna track them down, we're gonna take them out. <laughs> Probably within the last couple weeks. Like, I mean, it's in the dirt there. <laughs> you never know, but he's going this way. It's cool. Just found this right where we were about to set up to call. Sweet old saw. We hiked down off the mountain. Um, it's not dark yet. I kind of have mixed feelings about that, but we just weren't seeing any sign up there really. I mean, there was those old tracks, but we went through basically every patch of timber that looked good and called and looked and saw if we smelled anything, saw any fresh stuff, nothing fresh. That's uh, where we're at. First thing this morning, we and Corey spotted two raghorns from the road. So we're gonna try to get the wind and see if we can call them in. It was a moment of euphoria, quickly followed by disappointment, as these bulls knew the drill and they spooked out of there. The smart thing to do is probably just watch what they do, make a play when they bed down, get the wind right. Let's see if we can just get, let's get up the thing that is driving closer, get up there and just, watch and see if we can figure out if they're gonna, where they're gonna bed and then get the wind, hopefully get above them. Luckily though, one lone bull was still in the area, but he was about 300 yards onto private land. I'm not sure if that bull is the same bull or a different bull, but he's out of sight right now, but we, we're gonna try to keep him out of sight and get around. He's on private right now, but barely. So hopefully we can call him off. Corey and I got into position and we threw a cow party. This is our go-to method for coaxing in small bulls. I mewed, whined, buzzed until the bull just couldn't take it and he started to come in. Unfortunately, he circled around where we couldn't use the terrain to our advantage. I told myself I wouldn't shoot past 50 yards, and the closest he got was 55. It was pretty cool though to watch him run in and out like that. He wanted to come in so bad, but with the lay of the terrain, it just wasn't meant to be. That was freaking, that was so cool. That's another, if we had had a collar that could have moved and started moving away. Not, not holding my breath that we're gonna find anything else on public land. I think we, I think that was our opportunity, but it was a super cool opportunity. I'm stoked that we stuck with it and actually got a, we got a chance. We continued to hunt the next day, but as it turns out, that was our sole opportunity. Both of these hunts were tough. They challenged me and gave me a new perspective on how to hunt in areas with low density of game. It became evident to me that on hunts like this, you might spend an entire week to hopefully, maybe, get one opportunity. So I better make that opportunity count. I'm extremely glad that I got to go on these trips. I saw some amazing new country, hung out with good people. I saw landscapes that many people will never get to experience. I always learn something new, and spending time outside just gives me incredible joy.
I'm so grateful to be able to do these trips, and I will always recognize that I'll never know what tomorrow holds, and to live every day to the fullest.